All right, what's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So, in a year of gaming, when where we have gotten like ninety five percent bad news, we finally got some relatively good news. Um, last night, Sunday, which is kind of strange because usually news like this doesn't drop on a Sunday, let alone a Sunday night. But Tango GameWorks, the studio that Microsoft had acquired during the uh, Bethesda acquisition and then shut down this year in May has now been saved uh, through acquisition by Crafton Inc., which is the publisher for PUBG and a few other games. So let me just read this article. Tango Gameworks will live on as Microsoft uh, has reached an agreement with publisher, publisher Crafton to maintain the studio. Crafton, which is known for games like PUBG, has fully acquired Tango Gameworks from Xbox as well as the rights to Hi-Fi Rush. As I said, Microsoft uh, shut them down um, earlier this year. In May, Shinji Mikami had left. Uh, this is a studio that uh, you know was established by Shinji Mikami, um, known, known for Resident Evil. Uh, he left the studio, I want to say, a few months to a year before, before it closed, something like that. And if you remember, Hi-Fi Rush was a game that Microsoft touted as, you know, this success, critical success, um, commercial success. It won some awards, I believe. It was everything they said they wanted. Then they shut the studio down. Um, so in their press release, uh, Crafton said, Crafton Inc. today welcomed the talented people of Tango Gameworks to their team, marking a, an exciting moment in the company's global uh, expansion and its first significant investment in the Japanese video game market. Crafton is definitely trying to diver diversify their portfolio with the type of games they have. I'm not going to say like they're a bad publisher by any means. I don't have, they're, they're, there's nothing that points to me being able, being able to make that type of statement about them. I still look at them as, as an unknown. I think they're trying to become one of those powerhouse publishers and, and like I said, have a diverse portfolio. Um, and I think this move was one of their ways of doing that. I mean, some of the games they have in, you know, they have under their belt, PUBG is the biggest known one. Um, Terra, which is a, a MMORPG. Um, there's a top down shooter named Thunder Tier One. A bunch of like bowling, a bunch of some, some sports game, mini golf king, bowling king, Ronin the Last Samurai. Not necessarily a bunch of big names that you that most people would rec recognize. So I think this is a move to, you know, they wanted a Japanese um, developer and they o also wanted uh, just a just a name. And I think an IP to build off of uh, to become, like I said, one of those uh, to build themselves up as a publisher. But I wouldn't get, I don't know, I'm just, maybe it's the pessimist in me or the cynic in me. I'm like, dang, I hope they don't like acquire them and then in two years you hear about them shutting them down after they saved them. But, you know, that's, that's the type of place where my mind goes. Uh, here's the bad news, at least for me. The bad news for me is I don't care about Hi-Fi Rush. Just wasn't really a game for me. I tried it out. Yeah, it wasn't my thing. And the games that Tango Gameworks did work on that I care about, Microsoft, Microsoft still has the rights to them, unfortunately. And Microsoft will not do... I, I'm not delusional. Like a bunch of these other fans who think, oh, Microsoft owns this IP, this legacy IP. They're going to... They're going to bring it back. No, 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 no. Microsoft ain't doing shit with shit. Unless it's one of these big name games that they know that can make a, either bring people to Game Pass or make them some money. It's, it's not happening. They're not bringing nothing back due to fan service or, you know, for the, for the, for the reason of goodwill. It's not happening. Um. It, it, this article confirms uh, the fact that Hi-Fi Rush is heading across also heavily suggests that a sequel will most likely emerge from the partnership, obviously. However, franchises like Ghostwire Tokyo and The Evil Within 
will remain at Microsoft, at least for now. Both Crafton and Microsoft emphasize that there will be no impact on the existing catalog of games, uh, which remain available on Xbox Game Pass and other storefronts, other storefronts they're presently on. So, yeah. I really lo I, I love Evil Within. Um, and I really like Ghostwire Tokyo. I was hoping for a sequel for Ghostwire Tokyo. I'm like, yeah, a sequel for this would be, would do really well. Uh, I think it, it would think it would be a really good game. And those are the two games that I care about. And at least for now, as it says, unless Crafton decides they want to <clears throat> buy those games from Microsoft or partner up with them, because Microsoft could probably use that. Um, to their advantage, like as, as a leveraging uh, piece or something like that, they probably know, you know, co holding on to IP is, is a, these companies look at IP, like even if they're not going to do shit with it, they still understand that just owning the IPs have some type of value, even if there's never, it's not something that's ever going to be used. What I find interesting about this story also is, I'm interested in learning why this type of thing doesn't happen more often. Where a one publisher is shutting down a studio and another publisher that could take the talent, take the IP and say, "Hey, yeah, I don't want it. We'll we'll take all the shit over and and revive it and and keep moving forward with it." This is very rare in gaming. I don't know why this doesn't exactly happen more often. I'm sure there's a logical reason, logical reason for it. It's probably the logistics. It's, it's probably a whole lot. Um, and, and it's probably a little bit risky too. But yeah, I would like to know, like the, you know some more about the in-depth reasons why you typically don't see this type of situation happen in gaming very often. What, I, I can only think of like maybe one other time this has happened. And I can't even remember what, what, what the game or the IP and the publisher was. So I always think about like, man, it, how come, like you think about like WB, for example, right? Um, WB is like, and, and that's a little bit of a different situation, but WB is licensing off, uh, wants to license or some of their games or sell some of their studios and things like that. And I'm like, instead of shutting shit down, why don't publishers just put shit up for sale? More often. And may maybe they do behind the scenes and we just don't know about it. Maybe before they do actually shut down these studios, they have a behind the scenes um, private sale to see if there are any buyers that are interested and maybe it just doesn't happen very often. I don't know. But just wondering. Just wondering. Because I would much rather like, yeah, like, you know, I think about it like um, sports, trades, um, you know, when sports teams trade players uh you know pick up their contracts um free agents shit like that i'm like why why is it why doesn't it work like that in gaming i guess uh just curious so good for tango gameworks salute happy for y'all but to me i'm kind of indifferent because yeah the games that i care about nothing is being done with them right now I think I did see something that like 40 some odd employees that were at Tango before they will be rejoining. Um, it's not everybody, but it seems to be a good chunk of the studio and they will probably have to do some hiring. I wonder if like some people who have because this happened in May and I imagine some of those people already found jobs. I wonder if they, you know, if some of them would leave their jobs and be like, oh, uh, yeah, my studio's back open. Um, I'm going to go hang out with them now. Just wonder how that goes. So let me know what y'all think about this. If you're excited about Tango being back and Hi-Fi Rush. And, you know, I got, I got to throw in a little bit of, I don't think it's hate. I think it's truth. I think the popularity and the love for Tango Gameworks, not for Tango Gameworks, they're loved. But specifically for Hi-Fi Rush, I think the popularity and the importance and the love for that IP was overstated. I think it was overhyped. I think it was overstated. I don't think that game is as big and 
and as beloved as people would make it seem. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but by all accounts, it's, it's a quality product. Not taking that away from it. So, yeah, let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. Peace.